Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we're going to be considering the study article 36 for this weekend, November 4 to 5, 2023. And thanks for watching, thanks for being here. We have this very interesting theme entitled Carry what you must and throw off the rest. We have the theme text, Hebrews 12.1. It says, let us also throw off every weight and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Okay, friends, and we, we are in a race. In we, this, study, this study will help us to run the race for life. As runners, we are, we must carry certain loads. This include our dedication, vow, family obligations, and accountability for our decisions. On the other hand, we must throw off any unnecessary weight that could slow us down. But what does it mean? What does it include? In this study, we'll find the answers. So friends, now let's jump right in. And we have the first paragraph with the first question. But before to read it, we must read the scripture in Hebrews 12.1. And this is the theme text. So it says, so then... Because we have such a great cloud of witnesses are surrounding us, let us also throw off every weight and the sin that easily stingles us, and let us run with endurance that the race that is set before us. Okay, according to Hebrews 12.1, what do we need to do in order to reach the finish line in our race for life and the answer we need to make every effort to keep on running especially because the finish line is closer than ever and specifically like hebrews 12 1 says we must throw off every weight and run with endurance the race that is set before us Okay, now we have the second paragraph. Question two, what does it mean to throw off every weight? So the answer, we need to get, ra we need to get rid of every unnecessary weight and this type of weight could hinder us and cause us to tire out. So to endure, we must quickly identify and discard any unnecessary weight that could slow us down. At the same time, however, we don't, know, we don't want to cast aside loads that we should carry. Why? Because like 2 Timothy 2.5 reads, we could disqualify ourselves from the race. Okay. Okay, now let's move on to the third paragraph, and we have another scripture to read in Galatians 6, 5. For each one will carry his own load. So the question, A, according to this, what, we, what must we carry? This is really easy. Our own load. That's the answer. Our own load. So this means our personal load of responsibility before God. Something we must carry on our own. Okay, now question B. What will we consider in this article and why? And the answer is, we consider what is included in our own load and how we can carry it. Also, we'll 
identify unnecessary weights that we might be carrying and learn how we can throw them off. Okay. So, let's move on to the first subtitle, Loads We Must Carry. Paragraph 4. Why is our dedication for not a burden? So, we must keep in mind that it's a heavy responsibility, but it's not a burden. After all, Jehovah created us to do his will, like Revelation 4.11 says. And that's the purpose of the human life. Worshipping, honoring its creator. And he put within us a spiritual need and created us in his image. As a result, we are able to draw close to him and to find delight doing his will. So this is very significant and that explains why many people, they are not happy. Even also they have a lot of material possessions. They are rich and they have many things, but they don't find any sense in all these things. Many famous people. And many other people, they don't have the sense of their lives, and it's because their spiritual life is death. And also, we have another significant point uh, at the end of this paragraph, and this is Jesus' invitation. And when we are serving Jehovah, we find refresh. Because of this, this scripture says, Come to me, all you who are toiling and loaded down, and I refresh you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am mild-tempered and lowly in heart, and you'll find refreshment for yourselves. For my yoke is kindly and my load is light. How beautiful scripture is this. So that's the point. We might find joy serving, worshipping, honoring, glorifying Jehovah, our creator. Okay, now let's move on to the five question in question five. And we have another scripture in first John 5.3. But this is what the love of God means, that we observe his commandments, and yet his commandments are not burdensome. Okay, now the question, what can help you to fulfill your dedication? We have two things to keep in mind. The first one is, continue to strengthen your, our love. Continue to strengthen our love for Jehovah. We can do it by meditating on all the good he has done for us and the blessings that he has in store for us. And the more we love him, the easier it will be for us to obey him. Okay, that's the first one. The second one is imitate Jesus. Why? Because when he was on earth, and of course, before he was in earth, when he was in heaven, he was obeying, listening Jehovah's commandments. And he was depending on God. And that's a good example for us also. He was praying. He, he was thinking, focused on his reward. Like Hebrews 5, 7 and 12 to says. And like Jesus, pray to Jehovah for strength and keep the hope of everlasting life clearly in our mind. That's we must imitate. 
Okay, and in that way we'll be able to fulfill our dedication. Okay, now number six, why must we care for family obligations? And the answer is really significant. If someone doesn't care his family obligations, we might say that something anti Christian against the Bible principles. Of course, we must love Jehovah and Jesus more than we love any other person. And, and that's why in Matthew 10, 37 says that idea. So sometimes that happened in the past and that's happening in our day. There are some people and they... When someone is studying the Bible and they say, okay, you have to choose, make a decision between your God, your religion, the Bible, and your family. And that, that's the decision. And many people, they choose their family. They reject God because this decision. And of course, this doesn't mean that we can neglect our family obligations as though these were holding us back from pleasing God and Christ. On the contrary, to be acceptable to God and Christ, we need to fulfill our obligations, our role in the family. This is, this is pointed in the scripture in First Timothy five four eight. Let's take a look of this scripture. It says, "But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let these learn first to practice godly devotion in their own household, and to repay their parents and grand grandparents what is due them, for this is acceptable in God's sight." So there's no any other theocratic assignment more important than care first of our families. And like the scripture says, godly devotion in our own home with our parents or grandparents. Also, in 1 Timothy 5.8, it says, certainly, if anyone doesn't provide for those who are in his own, and especially for those who are members of his household, he has the sound, the faith, and is worse than a person without faith. Wow, that's very impressive scripture. Because in some time, we might think this is more a there is a privilege or assignment more important than care for our own family, our wife, or our children, even our parents or grandparents. But these scriptures teach and teach us uh, what's what's the matter, what's the real matter before God. And of course, there are some blessings waiting for us when we are fulfillment our role in our family and when we do we'll be happier okay friends and when someone is trying to reach a privilege service privilege in the congregation one of the matters they are uh, checking is how is this person doing about his family is he caring for his family in this is not only about material things like giving them some money, however that's important. That includes also this, their spiritual needs. So, very significant. And let's move on to the seven. But let's keep this in mind. This is one of the loads we must carry. Our dedication vote, that's one. Now, our family obligations. That's the other one. Number seven, how can you fulfill your role in the family? And 
we need to be convinced that Bible principles are the, the, the key. Instead of relying on mere emotions, culture, or what so-called experts may say. In some cultures, it's very common the children in certain age, they leave their home and they don't really care anything about their parents or grandparents. And how disgusting is that idea in comparison with Bible principles? So it doesn't matter if that's the culture in our country. We are Jehovah's servants, Jehovah's witnesses, and our good example is another way to preach, preach with uh, through our actions. So, on the other hand, we can make good use of our Bible-based publications. Uh, our website, there are some practical videos with some good practical suggestions on how to apply Bible principles. So it's really important that every week we take a look of this website and we might find some uh, advice at the proper time. Okay, now let's move on to the eight. This is the third load we must carry. And so we have the paragraph 8 with the question, how can our decisions affect us? And sometimes we, we don't think about but that's a fact. Um, we have free will, that's a gift. And but there are consequences every time we make a decision. The thing is, sometimes, like Galatians 6, 7, 8 says, there are good decisions and bad decisions. And that's why this scripture says, don't be muscle. I'm sorry. Don't be misled. God is not one to be mocked. For whatever a person is sowing, this he'll also reap. Because the one sowing with a view of the f to, the f to his flesh will reap corruption from his flesh. But the one sowing with a view of the Spirit will reap everlasting life from the Spirit. So, we accept the consequences of our poor choices, thoughtless words, or hasty actions. So, uh, how decisions may affect us, sometimes in good way, sometimes in a bad way, but it's in our hand, and every human being in, on this planet has the same free will and the same principle. This is an universal principle. Every action has consequence. And it depends what the person is choosing. Okay. And no, knowing that we are accountable for our decisions can prompt us to confess our sins, correct our mistakes, and avoid repeating our errors. And if we are doing, doing so, it will help us to stay in the race for life. Okay, now number nine. What can help you to cope with a poor decision? And there are some practical points like accept our current situation. We must recognize that we can change the past. So that's first step. And it requires humility because a... Uh, uh, pride person, he never accepts his own responsibility. Uh, instead of that, he is trying to justify himself of blaming others for his bad decisions. We have example in the uh, with Adam and Eve. 
Adam was blaming this woman and he said, Jehovah, that's because the woman you gave me, because of her I, I sinned. And when he asked Eve, she responded, Oh, it's because of the snake. Because of the snake, I disobeyed. Okay, and it's like a chain. Okay, uh, we can we can recognize our mistakes and work to make our best of our present circumstances. And also, if we feel guilty about a wrong we committed, humbly turn to Jehovah in prayer, admitting our mistakes and ask him, begging him his forgiveness. Also, if we um, did something bad to others, we must apologize with them and accept the consequences because there are some minor faults, uh, minor offenses, and it's not a big deal. But on the other hand, there are grave offenses, and okay, we must face the consequences of our actions. And also very important, we must seek the help of the elders. Keep this in mind, like James 5, 14, 15 says they are like spiritual uh, helpers, spiritual factors. So th they are there to help us. They are like uh, actors uh, or like is uh, shepherds, spiritual shepherds, and they are not butchers, they are shepherds. So we need to keep this in mind. That's the model that the Bible is teaching us in this scripture in James 5 14, 15. And there are many comments in this paragraph. We might learn from our mistakes and try to avoid repeating them. So now let's move on to weights we must throw off. And number 10. Again, we have another scripture in Galatians 6 4. Let's take a look of this scripture. It says, But let each one examine his own actions, and then he'll have cause of rejoicing in regard to himself alone, and not in comparison with the other person. Okay, why are unrealistic expectations a heavy burden? And we, we must avoid to compare ourselves with the other person. If we constantly are doing this, we could become envious and competitive. If we, in our heart, we feel envy, we are jealousy. Because the spouse of the other person, the car of the other person, the home, the house of the other person, we we mo we might suffer a lot. And of course, we won't. A there is another interesting point. It says. Unexpect even and if a uh, if expectation postponed makes the heart sick. How how significant are these words? How much more disheartening uh, it is to set expectations that we can never meet. Instead of that, we must think for what we have all what we have in our lives and if we are in this grateful state we le we might learn to be happy with all what we have and also we are that's like when we are opening the door to receive more blessings 
But if we don't appreciate all what we have in our life, we are closing the door to receive more blessings. And okay, now let's move on to 11. What can help you to avoid unrealistic expectations? And one is don't expect more of ourselves than what Jehovah requires. He never expects us to give what we don't have. And we need to keep this in mind. Jehovah doesn't compare us what we are doing with others do. So we shouldn't do that with ourselves or comparing other brothers with others like look that brother is a regular pioneer so wh what about you what are you waiting for that's what you are giving to jehovah you don't have something more valuable to give him wow we never should say that to our brothers because we are doing comparisons promoting competitions and that's not the matter. So Jehovah treasures our whole soul service, our faithfulness, our endurance. And there are some points here. Another interesting comment is modestly. Modestly accept that our age, health, and circumstances may limit what we can do now. Like Barzillai. Be willing to decline privileges when physical limitations become a problem. How beautiful. Because sometimes we might think that if we reject, if we decline some assignment, some invitation, we are committing a grave sin. And of course, that's not what Bible, what the Bible teaches in this example. But it depends on the circumstances of every person. And we have the example of Moses. He was accepting help and delegating responsibilities to others when appropriate. So there are different circumstances. There are not two brothers with the same circumstances. So modesty will prevent us from setting unrealistic expectations. Okay, now 12. Are we responsible for the poor decisions that others make? Explain. So this is very painful. How painful is this uh, topic? Because we can't change others, force them to serve Jehovah, and shield them from the consequences of their actions of the bad choices they have, they make. For example, a son or a daughter may eventually decide to stop serving Jehovah. Has that ever happened to you before? Is that your case? In that case, you might understand how painful is this, is this situation. And that's like a grief. Grief process uh, because the person is choosing to their his spiritual death, in other words, and it's hard to accept this reality, especially if we want to change them uh, or protect them of their bad decisions, and they don't accept their sin, their mistake. And maybe they want our help, money help, material help, but they don't want to serve Jehovah again. They want to be practicing grave sin, but they need some sponsor for money, for living, for food, jo just for free. We don't want to shield them. That's like we are interfering. With their process and Jehovah uh, is, is, is trying to teach them, he's teaching them, but we are interfering between Jehovah and them. 
uh, we are shielding and that's not our function and on the other hand there are some parents they are blaming themselves for their child's poor decision take on heavy burden and it's not a way that Jehovah expects them to bear now let's move on to 13 we have the question how can a parent deal with child's poor decision okay there are some practical advice like the first one recognize that Jehovah has given all of us free will that's the first one he lets each person make his own choice okay and that includes serving him okay with that in mind other good comment is Jehovah knows that we are not a perfect parent he simply wants we to do the best we can okay and that's their responsibility not our responsibility and like we said uh, there are different parents different kind of parents there are not uh, two parents with the same circumstances so everyone know his own circumstances and that's why it says uh, we might let jehovah know how we feel and ask his forgiveness okay and it's an interesting point in the bible that sometimes there are good parents like the prophet samuel he was a great parent but his children they are making poor decisions they are making bad on the other hand there were bad parents like Corey from Moses' time, and he had good children, so it's the opposite. And sometimes bad parents, bad children, and good parents, good children. But well, there is not a specific formula for every case. Sometimes you don't know how it will be in your personal case. Okay, the matter is, Jehovah wants we do our best we can. Okay, friends, now um, at the same time, okay, uh, here is the point. Uh, he doesn't expect that we keep our child from reaping what he has sown. So, like the prodigal son from Luke 15, 18 to 20. Maybe this son, he... Like in the movie, we have a theocratic movie in JW.R. Uh, so he chose, he was making his own decision. But if his parent was there, just imagine he was there saying, okay, you don't have money, you don't have where to live. Come to my place, I'll feed you, I'll cover you, and of course you you can keep with your disorder, your life of sinning. I'll support you. That's not what Jehovah expects for, from us. Uh, because this son, he never learned the lesson. Okay, and bear in mind that if our child makes any effort to return to Jehovah, he'll eagerly receive him back. Okay, now let's move on to 14. And we have the question, why is excessive guilt a weight we should throw off? Because this is insane. Excessive guilt is a weight we were never meant to carry. It's a weight we must throw off, and 
like we said, this uh, we have this picture, sister with the elders, and then the sister is doing great. And if we confessed our sin, repented, and are taking steps to avoid repeating our sin, we can trust that Jehovah has forgiven us. And now, uh, let's move on to 15. There is a question, what can help us, what can help you deal with excessive guilty? And we have the scripture in 1 John 3, 19, 20. It says, by this we'll know that we originate with the truth and will assure our hearts before him regarding whatever our hearts may condemn us in because God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Okay, uh, this this is very important, what can help us to deal with excessive guilty. Accept, accepting the reality, uh, accepting that uh, Jehovah's forgiveness, like Jeremiah 31, 34 says, when he forgives those who sincerely repent, he promises he'll no longer remember their sin. How beautiful scripture and this means uh, that Jehovah won't thereafter hold our past sins against us so don't view the consequences of our sins as an evidence that he has not forgiven us and don't punish ourselves because our past mistakes may limit what we can do now in our service. And of course, like we see in this picture, it's really significant the help that the spiritual shepherds they might uh, give to someone. Uh, and, and we can see how the good help from the spiritual shepherds is is helping because on the second picture the sister is happy again she's enjoying she's happy ser preaching she's happy in the service and that's the, the purpose of this spiritual help from the elders when they are uh, having this kind of meetings with the person a uh, purpose is try to save the person try to save his relationship with Jehovah, like a doctor say, uh, is doing in a hospital, uh, is the same. Uh, and everyone is happy. Okay, now let's move on to 16, run to win. As runners, what we must recognize. And we recognize the difference between the loads we must carry in the weights we must throw off. That's the key. But uh, others could be mentioned. Uh, like, for example, Luke 21 34. Uh, Jesus said that we could become weighed down with overeating and heavy drinking, not water specifically. And anxieties, anxieties of life. So, the method we use in this article might help us to identify some adjustments. And finally, 17, why can we be sure that we'll win the race for life? Okay, and that's why, that's because Jehovah will give us the strength we need. Like Isaiah 40, 29 to 31 says. And Jehovah has been helping many servants to win the race for life. For example, the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4, uh, he said he was finishing the race for life. He was about to die. 
but he was dying in integrity, loyal to Jehovah till the end. So if we die, but we are in integrity, in that way, we are winning the race for life. And of course, on the other hand, if someone is serving faithfully to Jehovah and is uh, going through the, Armag the Armageddon or the Great Tribulation, of course, he is winning the race for life. But what about if we die today? If we die tomorrow? Who knows? No one knows. And the matter is being loyal in integrity to Jehovah every day. And in that way, we are running this race for ourselves and we will win the race for life. Okay, friends, that's it. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video, and that's it. So, thanks for your time, thanks for, thanks for your patience with my English, and hope to see you next time. So, be safe, have a lovely weekend, and see you all. Bye.